Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Gordon, and this is iState.tv's iWire Daily for Monday, November 13th, 2017. On this show, we feature the Keurig Gate, or how to politically weaponize the marketplace, Chelsea's tweet hypocrisy called out, Begley building a gun confiscation loophole again, why Santa's elves are crying, hint, it's about 3D printing, and finally, our eyelolls of the day, highlights the story of meme storage device thieves with a sweet side. And now, on with the show. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your iTop Daily Report for Monday, November 13th, 2017. And this report will talk about the Keurig kerfuffle in the age of politically weaponized corporatism. Keurig drops ads from Hannity. Deplorables drop Keurig. So Hannity supporters are essentially destroying Keurig coffee maker over at So Sean Hannity recently interviewed the embattled GOP Alabama Senate nominee Roy Moore on his radio show and somewhat confronted him regarding the allegations that he had inappropriate sexual conduct with underage girls and media matters, of course, being media matters, the progressive attack dog that utilizes the tactic of attempting to intimidate advertisers to not support mostly conservative shows launched into another round of attack against Hannity, accusing him of enabling pedophilia by not confronting Roy Moore hard enough and by seeming to say it was okay to have sex with minors if it was consensual. So the unfounded and unwarranted charge is what Media Matters is using to scare, intimidate, cajole advertisers to remove their ad revenue from the Hannity show in what seems to be, uh, well, it seems to be a blatant attempt to shut down another conservative voice. And the effort is being conducted by an organization that has a tax-exempt status, an advantage in the market that its pro profit-making competitors simply don't have. Media Matters' efforts actually bore fruit this time with Keurig sending the message to a man who virtue signaled his outrage at pedophilia and again accusing Hannity of enabling and endorsing pedophilia. Angelo. Thank you for your concern and for bringing this to our attention. We worked with our media partner and Fox News to stop our ad from airing during the Sean Hannity show. And don't forget to check out the article, which is in the top right corner there, uh, that this is based on if you're watching YouTube. And if you're watching this on Facebook, you'll see the article link in the description above. So this story to me, this is about the decision by large corporations who have tremendous market manipulation power to use its economic and market power to support and advance the status progressive agenda. Now, this story to me is about finding out the real market power that conservative consumers may or may not have in response to the corporate progressive cabal, as I'll loosely call it. Sean Hannity, he interviewed a man under investigation for potentially having inappropriate sexual encounters with one underage girl and two young women. And uh, even as I, as, I, as I do this video, more news is breaking. And I got to tell you, more and more, looks a little, it's looking like maybe uh, Roy Moore. Yeah, the evidence is mounting against you, buddy. But be that as it may. may back to this story. So he could have pushed more harder, but conflating an endorsement of pedophilia with not being hard enough on a man who faces allegations, not convictions, a man who has denied all allegations to date, 
is a transparent attempt to exploit pedophilia for your own political ends. And again, there is breaking news going on. There's more evidence coming out, but that evidence that may be coming out was not the evidence that Sean Hannity had when he interviewed Roy Moore this past Friday and Saturday, or this past Friday. This is what Media Matters is doing, and this is what these corporations, which are... To me, they're either statist progressive controlled or they're weak before the statist progressive attack dogs. Now, from what I've seen, the case against Roy Moore, as I've said, it, it looks pretty damning. It's getting more and more. I'm not convicting the guy, but man, I don't know. I don't know. So I, 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 I can't convict this man without way more evidence than has been presented so far. But even as I'm doing this video, apparently there's more stuff which I haven't even seen yet. Uh, and uh, as, as far as I know up to this point, it's that four women have suddenly come forward to claim that this man did sexually inappropriate things with them when they were either underage or are inappropriately young for a man in his 30s to be pursuing. The precedent being set here is that we convict people before we know the full facts. But then that precedent is consistently already followed. And I, and I want to say, be it from progressives assuming the worst about their conservative enemies or conservatives assuming the worst about their progressive enemies. It's kind of happening. Now that the mega corporations have decided to put their money where their politics is, the cost of offering up any thought, any opinion that falls outside of the very, very narrow political perspective of these corporate owners whose views are, are, are becoming more and more rigid and more and more narrow is becoming increasingly high. Without the continued rise of grassroots crowdfunding, for alternative voices, such as which is offered on this website, uh, I say TV, the corporations and billionaire sponsors, such as in the case of Media Matters and even its conservative counterpart, Media Research Center, will be the sole arbiters of the voice that you get to hear in the news media marketplace. And another wrinkle to this story. Uh, Roy Moore is now coming out swinging against the Washington Post, where the stories originally appeared. Roy Moore said this past Sunday night, November 12th, at a campaign stump, the Washington Post published another attack on my character and reputation because they are desperate to stop my political campaign. These attacks said I was with a minor child and are false and untrue and for which they will be sued. And during the speech, Moore also addressed the allegations in the Washington Post story and denied that any of them were true. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your iPoll Daily Report for Monday, November 13th, 2017. On today's iPoll Report, we look at the tweet life of a not-so-funny comedian named Chelsea Handler, or a lesson in how to get owned on Twitter in one easy step. It's Chelsea's Hand Chelsea Handler's sex abuse tweet backfires. Bigley. That's right. Big so Chelsea took her brave self to Twitter, bracing herself to boldly declare that, yes, she too is against sexual assaults, rape, and all that stuff. I know, I know, I know. You're shocked, right? Much brave. So courage. Chelsea declared in a tweet, Imagine being molested by an older man. Then that man denies ever doing it and then goes on and gets elected to the United States Senate. What kind of message does that send to young girls everywhere and men to all the men who abuse women? I fixed her quote for her. 
with the if you're watching the video you can see the the meme here imagine being molested by an older man then that man denies ever doing it and becomes a powerful hollywood producer what kind of message does that send to young girls everywhere pretty much gonna be the uh heart of uh what we're gonna be talking about here now hey yeah now to be sure what she said in her tweet, absolutely that would suck. I mean, screw that guy, right? She is, of course, referring to Roy Moore, who may or may not be guilty of the charges being leveled at him by four women. And if true, well, yeah, that guy, that guy is for the major sucking, right? Right? I mean, am I right? Am I right? Now, if Chelsea wasn't Chelsea if she didn't have the rich history of being what some might describe as a sex abuse enabler. Hey, hey, I'm going to go ahead and go with that. That tweet might be bravely held up as another fine example of the moral courage of Hollywood standing up against Evo. Bravo. Cheers would well up and we would say to ourselves, this this is why they're better than us. This is why we should take their moral and political advice. They just get it. Now, don't forget. There. Don't forget to check out the article this report is based on, which should be appearing at the uh, right-hand corner there. Uh, it's from mystate.tv. And uh, it'll be on the upper right-hand corner if you're watching YouTube and if you're watching Facebook. It'll be in the description above there. So it, 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 it turns out that there was someone who had a powerful story to tell, a story that was not just ignored by the Chelsea handlers of the world, but one that was ridiculed. That story was by Juanita Broderick. And the story she told was about being allegedly raped by Bill Clinton the darling of the status progressives and husband to their other darling and failed presidential candidate. I really like saying that candidate Hillary. I hate at least half the country, but don't understand how I effing lost Clinton. So Winita Broderick tweeted back to Chelsea. I can't imagine. I was raped by the Arkansas AG who then became Gums governor president. And NBC held my interview explaining the rape until after his impeachment hearing. But I'm sure he don't want to go there. Needless to say, Chelsea doesn't want to go there because people like her have no real care or concern for real victims. They only see opportunity to exploit victimhood. Even if they had to invent it from nothing to nudge people towards their highly controlling, highly oppressing, state-worshipping, dictator-dreaming, status progressive waves. There was, there was one more tweet that came at Chelsea that spoke even louder of the hypocrisy of this self-righteous, morality police, language cop, thought controller, wannabe, and hackneyed comedian's clothes. And that tweet came from the gay patriot who simply said mm, tell us more while displaying a picture of chelsea handler nuzzled right next to the man who who seems to have started off the whole frenzy of sexual allegations allegations harvey weinstein himself to say that hollywood including chelsea didn't know what a sexist, molesting, and possibly raping piece of proverbial this guy was, this Harvey Weinstein guy, is to deny all the rumors that have been floating around Hollywood for years around this guy. But Harvey, Harvey made you money. And you got connections from Harvey. So yeah, yeah, Chelsea wasn't so concerned about the struggles of women facing sexual predators as she is now you see this time the predator in the crosshairs alleged is a republican running for senate and destroying him means getting one of her kind in the seat of power 
the kind of controlling, highly oppressing, state-worshipping, dictator-dreaming, statist progressive that reflects the true values of Hollywood. I want to say a, a last note here. This video is not at all about defending Roy Moore. I, I, I don't... I, I, I mean, uh, I, I haven't dug deep into, uh, you know, who, 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 or what, and why. It, it, I'll just say that the little that I have seen, I it doesn't look good for Roy Moore. It looks highly, highly questionable, I'm going to say. So this isn't about Roy Moore. This is about Chelsea Handler and her high-handed hypocrisy. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your iGun Daily Report for Monday, November 13th, 2017. On this iGun Report, we talk about increasingly low standards to justify confiscating guns and how one county in Washington State plans on becoming a new test model for gun confiscation strategies around the country. King County Council members have taken to using a federal law that requires individuals who have served, who have been served with a domestic protection order to turn in their firearms to the local police in their area. And what they plan on doing is combing through their database of domestic abusers who have not turned in their guns and developing a strategy to go out and seize their guns. To that end, the council members have earmarked $600,000 to fund the program that will be required to go out to these alleged domestic abusers' homes and confiscate their guns. This one, of course, is an easy one to get the public to support. And don't forget to check out the article this report is based on at iState.tv. And if you're watching YouTube, the link will appear in the, the right-hand corner of this video. Ha <laughs> ha! And if you're watching this on Facebook, it'll be in the description above. So, what we have here is, well, I'm going to spell it out for you. These moves by the King County Council members, to me, are basically, it's a test model for other gun grabbers to study. How successful will they be in confiscating guns? How much will it cost to collect some said number of guns? How does the community react to armed government agents knocking on doors to take guns from people who have been convicted of no crime and thus they haven't faced due process before their fundamental rights are violated? The precedent set by civil asset forfeiture, I believe, and uh, that's what's at play here. The, the, and, and the precedent, precedent that it set is that the state should have the power to seize your property and limit your rights based solely on the fear that you might engage in criminal activity. And this is, this is why such things as gun confiscation from people merely being accused of being domestic abusers is a is a perfectly reasonable use of state power against its own citizens, and sadly, I I I doubt very much that the citizens of King County will will see much wrong with stopping dangerous men, and and I'm sure that's what most people imagine when they think of domestic abusers, uh, and and so so you picture these dangerous men, and yeah. You, you, the idea of, of, of preventing them from having the tools to do bad things to helpless women, this is the image that they're building in your head. It's the perfect victimhood scenario to nudge people towards the false choice of surrendering more liberty in exchange for more security. So the best scenario to this is this. To encourage more people to be armed, to be trained, to be reasonable gun owners. One thing almost all real domestic abusers have in common is this. They like to target people who can't effectively fight back. A woman with a gun, 
or knows how to use it, that's not the type of target that most of these domestic abusers want to go after. King County Council members aren't interested in actually helping women under threat from dangerous men. Rather, they're interested in exploiting a genuine fear to nudge people towards an acceptance of a more powerful state that controls citizens that are increasingly weakened to resist the abuse the state has in the pipeline for the not-so-distant future. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your I Build Daily Report for Monday, November 13th, 2017. In this report, we're going to let you know exactly what smartphone apps have to do with advancing 3D printing and introducing the technology to a whole new marketplace, home toy manufacturing hobbyists. This is smartphone app brings 3d printed toys to the home or the app that will launch 3d printing to great heights astroturf uses smartphone app toy maker to introduce 3d printing to a whole new audience all right i went to the wrong place but I'm back in the right place. So 3D printing is a technology that we regularly track on iState at iState.tv as we view it as, as, as one of the key self-empowering technologies out there today. News on the smartphone app front gives us even more reason to be excited about this technology. Astroprint released a new smartphone app called Toymaker that enables you to download toy designs and print them out on your 3D printer. And here's more information we're going to share from 3dprint.com. But first, don't forget to check out the article that this report is based on at iState.tv. And if I'm doing it right, you should see... Uh, the link appear in the upper right hand corner of this video if you're watching on youtube and if you're watching on facebook that link is in the description above so astroprint just released uh, and this is, uh, I'm going to be reading now from 3dprint.com. Astroprint has just released a new toy app called Toymaker, meant to offer kids a way to 3D print their own toys with 170 different options to choose from. Features that make this app very attractive for kids and parents include, one, well, it's free. The designs are of premium quality. The process is very simple, requiring just a few clips, clicks, Learning opportunities abound. Okay, I'm great. And uh, slicing the 3D design, distributing designs, and getting started on 3D printing. And then this is, again, this is still from 3dprint.com. Not only will your kids be engaged in learning more about how the 3D printing process works, but they'll learn about 3D design and many materials available to bring innovation to light. Skipping the process of shopping in a mall or online store, you can look forward to producing toys at the desktop in your own home and all with a support system of experience, Astroprint designers behind you. Astroprint, known as one of the fastest growing platforms for desktop 3D printing as a company we've followed often, and especially as of late as they've launched their own mobile app offering new file management features, slicing options, and far more. The goal of this progressive company is quite simple, to make 3D printing simple for everyone. And I'm for that. So what is the get for Astroprint in doing this free thing? Well, it's simple. Astroprint wants to create more useful reasons for you to buy its product, a 3D printer, and build trust with the rapidly growing 3D market. The app is a marketing tool for the 3D printmaking company. So don't be surprised if you see more 3D print companies following suit, as well as the providers of the materials you need to use your 3D printer. So this is going to open up a world of much more individualized product creation 
from the consumers themselves. In this market, the product is not the product. It's the tools and the supplies to create a product of your choosing. And you can bet many of these home 3D print manufacturers may very well make a little product selling their own, or a little profit selling their own unique printed products to others. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your ILO's Daily Report for Monday, November 13th, 2017. On this ILO's, we report on the tragic story of meme robbing, but this story has a sweet ending. Meme storage device and donut shop robbers show kinder, gently, gentler side, or meet the donut Robin Hoods of Houston, Texas. Donut robbers offer sweets to robbery victims. Three masked men walk into a donut shop with one intention, to rob every and anyone of everything they have. But along the way, one of our masked men decides to offer up a consolation prize, if you will, to the people, the donut shop robbing bunch just robbed and be sure you check out the uh, link to the article on iState.tv which is posted right in the upper right corner there if you're watching on YouTube or in the post description above if you're watching on Facebook this is the article that this video was based off of and it also has the video surveillance of the great donut heist of 2017 in it as well So here's the story of three masked men who were thinking of a robbery one night. They thought hard about the target, and then they said a donut shop sounded just right. Yes, yes, I wrote the two opening lines of this presentation to the theme song of the Brady Bunch, and I sure hope that you got that uh, i'm assuming you did and you sang along with my glorious re rendition of a television classic so in this idols of the day we have three masked men but not no masked gals well not no masked gals but no masked gals why don't we just say but no uh, double negative that's right you don't want a double negative but no masked gals and definitely no mom and dad Brady, because, yeah, they're actually both dead now, kids. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to harsh mellow there. Still, we have a wholesome story to tell in much the same way as a Brady Bunch episode. And this story comes out of uh, Houston, which is apparently in Texas, which my Houston friends remind me is now home to the World Series Houston Astros. And yes, I'm dating this video. It's 2017, November 13th. I already said that, but yes. So, so yeah, I, I threw in a sports ball reference into this I lulls fight me, but not really. Houston police are on the lookout for three masked men who, as the opening lines of the I lulls suggests, were on the lookout for a robbery target and decided to choose a donut shop. In an effort to find the donut shop robbers, the Houston police decided to share the surveillance footage of the crime taking place. And this this video shows three masked men going into the shop with one of the masked men letting the world see that, yes, indeed, he does have a gun. The gun-wielding masked man targets the cash register and immediately relieves it of its monetary burden. Meanwhile, one of his fellow masked men, Donut Shop Robber Pals, decides, hey, why stop in money? So he takes the cell phones from two Donut Shop customers. This is when it gets kind of, kind of, uh, because, yeah, that's freaking rude. And I, and, I, and I hope that he at least emailed their memes back to them. Meme theft is no joke, kids. Once the phone thief successfully acquired the phones, he then appears to talk to the customers. And I'm really hoping he's telling them that their memes will be emailed to them because otherwise, yeah, 
I could get really upset about this because, folks, memes are life. Don't you forget it. So while Mr. Meme Robber, and, and yeah, that's what he is to me. Don't judge. Do not judge. Checks out the uh, donut-tastic display before him. The other two masked men donut shop robbers proceed to take stuff from the employees. But at least these guys were not robbing meme stash storage devices, which is all a freaking cell phone is anyway. Let's be honest. And if it's more than that for you, then what's your problem? Oh, here is the time when we enter into the ILOs part of the story. Picture, if you will, the bumbling, stumbling soundtrack of a scene from the Brady Bunch. Maybe one where Cindy is about to fall down a flight of stairs. And, you know, I, I don't I, I don't know if that ever actually happened on the show, but so long as no actual Cindy was harmed in the making of the show, that would have been funny. And when I say funny, I mean to a low brainy, a, a low browian such as myself. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with that music in the back of your mind, something like that, take in the image of Mr. Meme Robber offering to the customers various and sundry sweets from the donut shop counter. See? It's a meme robber with a heart of gold, a freaking heart of gold. Now, this is where you get a close up. Of Mr. Meme Robber and that oh shuck smile comes over his mask face with his shoulders gesticulating in that all shucks way. Then the laugh track smacks you hard in the face and the credits come up. Better yet, a to be continued sign comes up. Then you see scenes from the next episode of the Brady Bunch, which is now renamed the Donut Robin Hood Bunch. And the narration says Next week, on a very special Donut Robin Hood Bunch episode, the Bunch learned the lesson that robbing people of their memes of production is not cool. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moral of the story? Never, ever look a gift donut in the mouth, even if it just stole your meme stashing device. Thank you for making it through to the end of the show. Be sure you tune in tomorrow right here on youtube.com slash iState and facebook.com slash no consent to gov for another exciting episode of iWire Daily featuring me, your host of hosts, Paul Gordon. My name is Paul Gordon, and this has been iWire Daily from iState.tv. Be sure you like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash iStateTV and select See First in Your News Feed under the Follow tab. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure you subscribe to us at youtube.com slash iState. Hit that big red subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell right next to it to get daily notifications when we post new videos.